If you've got a Mark One Ford K, you would probably come across an MOT failure called the McPherson strut mounts or the top rubber mounts. They look something like that. If you go to a garage, they will charge you £90 a side plus parts for fitting. So we're going to show you today the easiest way to change those without much fuss and saving you nearly £200. So we've now got the car up on axle stands. So the first job is to take the wheel off. Now remember, when you're taking the wheel off, loosen these nuts before you jack it up, otherwise it's a so-and-so to undo, especially if you're doing the job by yourself. But I'm lucky because I have the ape with me. Now we've got the wheel off, you can have a look, see what's actually under here. First job we need to do is to take off this plastic inner wing. After that, we need to undo this bolt, undo the bolt that's just down there, which I'll show you a picture of in a moment, and remove that. We also need to remove this one here, but that will be the last one we undo. Using your 17mm spanner, put it on the lock nut behind the suspension mount or the anti-roll bar mount and then use your 15mm socket and undo it. To get it out you may need to turn the steering slightly to release it but Mark was luckily able to do that without it. Next is to remove this from its fixing that just pulls out. Now you're ready for the pinch bolt at the bottom. That is the pinch bolt that you've got to undo. Go for it. So with a 19mm socket turn it anti-clockwise. Here you will have a split. So what you need to do here is just open it just slightly. The best way is to use a hammer and a screwdriver just to tap it so it releases. This will help release it so you can remove the hub from the suspension. Using a, using a plastic faced hammer or a piece of wood and an ordinary hammer hit the hub assembly and you'll see that this starts separating at the bottom which is what you want. Now you'll see that the hub assembly has separated from the suspension. Use a jack to support the hub assembly so that the half shaft doesn't pull out the gearbox but as you can see it's all clear ready to come out. Now we have to undo the top. Looking at the top of the strut, use an offset 19mm spanner on the nut and you'll see there is an allen key slot in the top. Place the allen key in the top and turn the spanner anti-clockwise. You do this to stop the strut or the centre of the strut moving. Now you've got your suspension strut off, use your spring compressors to hold the spring in place and using a 19mm spanner and a, a, your allen wrench, hold, put the allen wrench in the top and start undoing the nut at the top. Now this will be tight, so you have to use a bit of welly to get it started. We're using a 19mm ratchet spanner because it makes it a lot easier than just having to uh, keep turning a span around. We've got the nut right to the end so it's easy to take off with your fingers. 
Now replace the old bearing. You might need to tap it or force it. And put the new bearing on. Now it's a case of putting the nut on and tightening up. It's always handy at this point to have someone hold the suspension strut when you tighten it to give you a bit, to make the job a bit easier. Here's the new and old uh, mounts. This is the new one, this is the old one. Now, I don't know if you can see it properly here, but you, there is a gap of about two and a half to three millimeter there between the two. So the new one is actually slightly deeper than the old one. I think this is probably an improvement on the old original rubber. Now we've got the new bearing on. It's a simple case of putting the new rubber on the top, like so. And now I've got to feed this up, getting it the right way round. So Mark can put the cap, which will show the Mark, Mark will show the cap, and the nut on top. Now this is a lot easier, you can do it by yourself, but it's a lot easier when you've got someone to help you. The dwarf flight job really helps. Yeah. This my little fingers and there we go. So I've got it in place and Mark is now tightening this up. Now again he will use his 19mm spanner and use the what's the name? Oh, I forgot the name of it, guys. Offset. Uh, offset. No, it's not the offset spanner. It's the Allen key thing. What's the name of the Allen key? An Allen key. Allen key. Yeah, you need the Allen key to go on <laughs> the top. So, there is the offset. As you can see, John suffers from Alzheimer's. Yeah, I may have Alzheimer's, but at least I don't have Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> so, you need the um, Allen key at the top. So have you put the nut on the top? You need to tighten up the top. Are we tightening up top? Yes, we're going to tighten up the top. Okay. So as Mark's tightening up the top, I shall hold this in place. And as I said, it's a lot easier when there's two of you doing this part. Right, so we've taken the jack away, which frees up the hub assembly. Now it's a case of getting the hub assembly onto the strut. If a little wiggle. It goes back on. Now here's our top tip for this. Using a jack underneath this hub, not actually, don't remember, don't put it on the, uh, the actual brake disc. You jack it up slowly while shaking this to get it up. But you've got to make sure that the bit at the back is a located. Is a, there is a locating thing which I have to come around that side for. Actually, I can do it here. There we are. There's a locating thing there. You've got to make sure that. that goes into the gap at Just the back. Just below that, there's a gap. This seats into that gap, and a nut which we screw in from here goes through this hole, which keeps it all in place. So now it's time to put the jack under. So we've put the jack under the lower ball joint, ready to jack up. My jacket. Yeah, your jacket. Here again, it's a lot easier when you've got two people. So one person jacks it, and the other person helps manoeuvre and wiggle the whole thing back into place. And we need to turn slightly. We need to turn the steering slightly here. So Mark's going to turn the steering. Just a little wiggle. You see it starts seating. Get fingers clear. 
And just once you get the right out to just slightly knock the locator or and tap the housing just to get it back in. There we go. There we go with the wiggling, it all go back in. So we'll just use yeah, the jack just to take it up a little bit more. And in she goes. Now you can see it. there we go, that's about it. I know whether it's lined up because of the bolt. Exactly. So Mark's now going to put the pinch bolt in. So as Mark says, you can tell it's lined up because the pinch bolt goes in fully. So now it's just a case of tightening everything up. So the next job while he's there is to put the brake, the brake pipe back into its holding. Now we put this in. This is the part of the anti-roll bar. Now, on, now you can see the now flaps on here, the jack. which um, you put your 17mm spanner on to hold it in place while you tighten it up. Are you ready? We're ready. We're going to turn the steering so that we can get the anti-roll bar back on. Now we're ready just to poke that through here. And where's the nut? It's always a good advice. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's always a good advice to keep your nuts in a good in a box so you don't lose them. And try not to drop them on the floor. Yeah, we have the box here. Even though we do, um, every so often, kick it and the nuts go flying. <laughs> That's not advised. So there we go, with the 17mm on the back, you can tighten that up nicely. All that's left to do now is to put the plastic inner wing on. But what we're going to do is, what I suggested earlier, is all the little bit of rust spots that are under here, give them a quick wire brush and paint over with anti-rust just to help protect them. So that's it for how to fix your car. Hope you found this useful. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment if there's any problems or if you need any help with other cars. Send us a message and we'll catch you next time.